Okay, so from the heights of the Super League to the Midlands then, and obviously there's been a few, you know, little uh, upsets and, and strange results in the Midlands as well. Are uh, you saying strange results? I don't know if they are strange results. It's probably the closest Midlands league we've ever had. But that's what I mean by strange. Like sometimes you have like outstanding teams that just run away with there's, it. Yeah, there's no, there's, no run, there's no runaway side this year. Um, Nottingham are currently sitting top of the table. Yeah. Um, just two points clear of Telford. But the, the, play, the race for the playoffs is anybody's game. I'll bring the league table up right now on screen. So Nottingham Outlaws currently on 10 points, Telford on 8, Birmingham on 8, and then you've got Oxford and Coventry fighting it out for the playoff position with Sherwood, who have also got a game in hand. So the fixture's still to go. So it's, it's very interesting, this. You've got um, Coventry have still got two games to go. They've got Oxford Cavaliers. That's going to be a huge game this weekend. Yeah. In the fight for the uh, the fourth place. And then Coventry play Swindon the week after. You would expect them to probably pick up a win there. And then Sherwood, who I didn't expect to be outside the top four, currently find themselves sitting in six. They've got a very tough game against Nottingham uh, this weekend. And then they play Leamington the week after. So, yeah, it's hard to call. We did catch up with Jamie Jones of Oxford Cavaliers, and uh, here's what he had to say. Jamie, thanks for spending a bit of time with us today. Um, you must be no quite problem. excited about the result of the weekend. Yeah, really, really good result of the weekend. Quite fortunate in the end, but yeah, it was good to get the win. Jamie, t- talk us through it for anybody who doesn't know the result. Um, uh, how did the game go down? How did your uh, how did your lads go on this weekend? Uh, it was- it was a real tricky one this weekend. We um, we built into the weekend off the back of some it, it, numbers weren't great. We were struggling. We managed to get to sort of 14 players on Saturday morning, which is the usual struggle at Cavs, unfortunately. Uh, but we mustered up and we, we got going into a game and, and we, we dealt with Sherwood sure quite well early on. We managed to get uh, our noses in front on the scoreboard uh, and we were, we were sitting quite comfortable, actually, at one point in the game. We thought we had full control. Unfortunately, Sherwood weren't going to go away. They they, they travelled well and they wanted to put in a performance. And late on in the second half, they sort of got three quick tries back and we really under the pump. And without a bench, we sort of had to dig deep and, and we, we sort of got... It's the last play of the game. It was a scrum and we're very fortunate that we, we got a very talented fullback who had the balls to chip and chase his own kick and score with the last game play of the game. So... And to kick it as well, which I thought was pretty impressive. So all in all, it was a really good performance, really dogged performance at times. Um, we like to do it tough at camps. Um, we're not the biggest squad. We don't have a lot of depth, but what we do have is uh, a lot of character and a lot of resolve when we need it. So uh, we're, we're very proud of the efforts that all the players put in and uh, we're looking forward to getting over to Coventry and try and put our best foot forward and get a result there and remain in the playoffs and see where we go. Jamie, not often do those chip and chase come off, do they? But uh, what, what was you thinking when like, he, you know, he put foot to ball and then you know, die in seconds? What was going through your mind? Uh, if he gets this, he's going to be man of the year, to be honest. He, you know, he's going to get player of the year again. He, I mean, uh, Andy Cross, I'll name him. He's a very talented young man, to be honest. And uh, we're very fortunate that he likes to play rugby league and he likes to play it with us. Um, to have the balls to do that with the last play of the game sort of demonstrates the character of the man. But to get to that point, there was, you know, there was 12 other people that had a shirt on that wanted to do a job. So yeah. uh, I think he had the backing of the team. The team were led well with Lowick running the show in half. He's our captain. He, he sort of steered us into that position in the first place. So credit to the whole team and credit to Andrew for uh, getting us over the line when we needed it. Jamie, it's fair to say that, you, that Oxford didn't start the season too well this year. You've kind of built into the season and got got stronger as you've gone on. Has there been any sort of turning point this year in the league? Uh, no, I think the turning point, is, uh, and I'm, I'm sure it's the same for a lot of Midlands-based clubs, is that when the union season finishes and the guys that have come out of that county programme that most of them are in, the, the, the squad seems to strengthen a little bit there. So sometimes we do get a bench when we're really lucky. Um, and I think on those occasions, that's when we, we've, had our best results. Um, obviously, we, we, we played Telford at home, which was a real tough gig. I mean, Telford are a very strong team. They've done really well. Um, so uh, we've won all of our home games, which is which is is, is a good thing, obviously. And um, we'd like to have beaten everyone, but that's you know that's we don't deserve that, right? Uh, we've got to go and work for it. So all in all, I just say that we just our squad come together when we needed it, and we've got the results when we've needed them most. So. That's where we're at. Jamie, what, how would you sum up the Midlands League 
in its entirety this year. I mean, like, for example, Carl and I were talking yesterday and we're sort of saying, look, this is probably the most competitive league, you know, we've ever had in the Midlands. Do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've had a couple of chats offline, haven't we, before where we've met each other and, and we've said that it's never been this good. I mean, I've, I've been in the Midlands since I was 16, playing rugby league and teams that have gone by and I've never seen it as competitive as this. I've never seen as many teams as this. I've never seen the the scores, you know, it was almost a guarantee you'd win all your home games, you might lose a couple of away games, but this time it's, it's, it's very competitive wherever you go. Hopefully it'll just go on again in strength next year. Last year, Oxford, you, you fell away a little bit at the end. You got one game to go. D- do you think you've got what it takes this year to sort of make that top four? I really do, yeah. I, I, like I say, we are a dogged bunch. They're, they're, they really are quite determined. When, when we can get our best team out there we can get to 20 we, we we believe we're probably right up there we deserve to be in that top four top five um, so hopefully I mean Coventry is going to be a tough test right no one no yeah. one seems to roll Coventry over at home so you know we're under no illusion it's going to be an easy task we know it's going to be very very hard and we're going to respect that and we're going to respect Coventry but if we can get everyone in, I'm sure we'll compete. And uh, last thing, Jamie, um, cause you're also involved with uh, the Midlands Hurricanes women's team. You you also played with those this weekend. How did it go, and and how's your squad building? I know it's a development squad, but how, how are you getting on? Well, it's very much that. It's it's very much a development squad, and this year is just about developing opportunities to get these these, these women out and playing rugby league. We. We obviously went well at your guys' festival. We managed to reach the final in that, and that was a you know it was a real good uh, a real good event, and we done really well. We felt really proud of ourselves after that. We um, we went down to Cambridge, uh, Cheltenham, and played there, and got a good result there. This weekend was slightly different because we sort of come out of our comfort zone and went and played a um, uh, Nines festival down at Bristol. Um, it was a bit of an acid test. We were a little bit weakened in our in our depth again. Um, we travelled with nine and. Yeah, the first result against Bristol um, sort of really got away from us. There was there was definitely a uh, a, a difference in calibre, should we say? But we, we we kept our integrity and we we kept going. Um, but we were a quite a distant second in that match. Um, and then we played West Warriors, a great bunch of girls. Uh, they're very much like us. They just got a bit more depth, um, and we competed really well. It was a really well contested game to be fair. Um, that ended up twenty four eighteen. So. You know, we're building the right way. Um, what I would say is, is that our next big test is the Navy. At the end of this month, we play you know, the Royal Navy over in Bourneville on the 28th. So if there's anyone that wants to come along and watch that, that'll be a spectacle on shore. Um, and then we obviously, we've got a host our festival at the Alex, which again, I'm hoping, you know, a lot of the Midlands teams will come along and have, have a dig at. So yeah, lots to look forward to on both camps, to be honest. Brilliant, Jamie. Best of luck with uh, both Oxford and um, and the Hurricanes. Uh, you're obviously doing a great job there, getting these getting these teams on on the pitch and you know we'll doing the right trying. things, right time. But so uh, you know, good effort, and we'll be keeping an eye out of your results. That's fine. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks for taking time to call in. Cheers Thanks then. a lot. Bye bye. Bye.